Hi friends, Michelle here with Epicurean Delights. Are you looking for something different to do with your bananas rather than just making banana bread? Well, my banana pull apart bread is so easy. It is a rising yeast dough. It features a delicious caramel sauce and lots of bananas. Let's get started. So one of the first steps to making my yeast based dough is that I wanna make sure that my milk is not too hot. So I always take its temperature before I add my yeast because if it's too hot, you'll actually kill the yeast. So I'm using active dry yeast and I've added that to my milk. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of brown sugar and this is going to feed my yeast and will allow my yeast to bloom. You want your milk to be about the temperature of like a baby's bottle. So I'm just gonna activate this and then set it off to the side and then we can go ahead while we're waiting and start on our bananas. So I'm using some ripe bananas. I've got two of them here. So this recipe is gonna call for two. You'll want some extra just to garnish the top of your um, pull apart bread. And I'm gonna mash these up. This bread is great for a brunch or with coffee in the morning. It is similar to like a monkey bread if you've ever made monkey bread before. Um, it pulls apart. You can also do this in a bunt pan. I'm going to do it on a sheet pan, but you could also throw your pieces in layers into a bunt pan. So I'm just using a fork and I'm going to mash up my banana. It'll just be um, easier to incorporate it into your dough. So again, I'm just using a fork and giving this a good mash. And next I'm going to use my mixer. So I'm just gonna transfer those mashed bananas right into my mixing bowl, uh, the, the mixing bowl of my KitchenAid. If you don't have a KitchenAid, you could you know, use a hand mixer. Um, it might be a little bit tougher to do though just because it will probably put a little bit more strain on a hand mixer so you know keep that in mind I'm going to add my egg to this a little bit of melted butter my bloomed yeast you want to get all that goodness in there next I'm gonna add my cinnamon I'm using a ground Saigon cinnamon I really like Saigon cinnamon it's delicious then I'm gonna add in my salt and then I'm gonna slowly start to incorporate um, my flour. So I have it separated out because my bowl was a little bit too small for my flour. So I'm just gonna get some of this in here. I'm gonna be using the paddle attachment with my KitchenAid. Um, you could use a dough hook if you want to. I'm adding a little bit of brown sugar as well. It's going to give my dough that that sort of cinnamon roll sweetness taste and then I have a little bit of Madagascar bourbon vanilla which is my absolute favorite I'm adding that if you don't have uh, Madagascar bourbon vanilla you can use any type of vanilla including vanilla bean paste again just using my paddle attachment and I'm gonna go ahead and start to get those ingredients incorporated I'm not putting all of my flour in because I don't want to have a big huge mess in my kitchen. So a little bit at a time. Now that I've gotten my dough pretty well mixed up, I'm just going to check the consistency and see if I need to add any more flour to it. I like to dip my hands in the flour just because it keeps it from getting to be so sticky. So this is one of those things where you want to check your dough um, because you don't want to put too much flour in. 
and have a really dried out dough, but you don't want it to be so sticky that you can't work with it. Next up, I want to knead my dough, so I'm putting a little bit of flour down on the counter. This is one of those things where you, you want to be kind of careful. The more you knead your dough, the more you're going to activate the gluten in the dough. Um, the, if you overactivate the gluten, your bread will become very tough, and um, tough bread is not very delicious. So I'm just going to gently knead my bread. The flour helps keep it from sticking to the counter. Now I'm using a little portable proofer. I've had this for probably 10 or 12 years now. Um, you don't have to use something like this. You can just put it in a warm place on top of your stove and let it rise. But I love this little gadget. It works well. As far as the cream goes, I am using a 40% heavy whipping cream. That's what I have on hand and typically what I bake for and uh, bake with unless I'm going for, you know, a really, really light cream, then I'll use just regular grocery store cream. So I'm using some brown sugar here. You want to definitely pack this in. I think sometimes people forget to pack and they'll just lightly put some of their brown sugar in. And so your recipe will be off if you don't give it a good pack. Now I also want to reserve a little bit of this sauce because when it comes out of the oven I'm going to put it on top so that I'm going to, um, you know, I, I just want to make sure that it's nice and saucy. I like sauce. Next up I'm going to make a dipping sauce and this is going to be to dip my monkey bread in before I stick it into that caramel sauce and bake it up. So I've just got some melted butter and I'm going to add a little bit of, um, or a lot of it, of granulated sugar along with cinnamon. Again, I'm using the Saigon cinnamon. I'm going to add a little bit more. I, I love this Saigon cinnamon. If you've never used it before, it's so delicious. I get it at Costco. They don't always carry it, so um, I usually try to buy two of them when I see that they have it in stock. So I'm just going to mix this all together and then set it aside and grab my, my uh, proofed dough. 
My dough is nice and proofed, so I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of flour onto my counter. And I wanna punch this dough down, and then I'm going to um, cut it up. So just, just a little bit of flour onto the dough, or sorry, onto the counter. And you can see my dough is nice and puffy. So my dough is ready to go. I've just stretched it out with my hands. I don't want to use a rolling pin because again, I don't want to overwork that gluten. So I've got my bench scraper here and I'm just going to cut it in half and then I'll continue to cut it into strips and then cut those strips down into pieces. And those pieces are going to be what I dip into that first mixture I'm sorry, the second mixture that we made, which was the cinnamon and brown sugar with butter. And then I'll place it into my caramel covered baking dish. Now you wanna make sure that you pack these pieces in pretty tight into your baking dish. Um, I usually put some tin foil on the bottom of the oven and then I'm just gonna bake these up. And then you can see it came out all nice and golden brown. I'm going to use another cookie sheet to flip this out onto a bigger one. And this just makes it easier to deal with. I'm going to put that reserved amount of sauce because as it sits and cools down, it gets less saucy. So I'm just going to drizzle that remaining sauce on top. Now uh, you could transfer this to a serving dish. I happen to have colored baking sheets, so I often just use them as serving dishes because I think they're cute. <laughs> so just, you know, use that extra sauce just to work it into the nooks and the crannies. And then we're gonna garnish this whole thing off with fresh banana on top. As far as the fresh banana goes, you're gonna wanna make sure that you place the fresh banana on it when you're getting ready to serve it. If you do that now and then decide to not serve it until like say tomorrow, your bananas will brown. So just keep that in mind, you know, add the banana garnish right when you're getting ready to serve it so that you don't have, you know, sort of ugly brown bananas on top of it. You want this to look really fresh and appetizing. There you have it, our delicious banana pull-apart bread. Good for breakfast, lunch, or even dinner. It's a good thing. So until next time, make it sweet or savory, but always delicious.